Okay. Alrighty, I'd like to call the Legislative Affairs and Government Operations Committee to order at 9.32 a.m. Roll call, please. Commissioner Skershenson? Here. Kogan Durker is absent with notice. Jackson? Here. Luce? Here. Joliet? Here. Nelson? Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, we got a webcam issue. Oh. Alrighty, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Alrighty, next up we have approval of the minutes. Are there any corrections or changes to the uh, minutes of the June 8th, 2021? Um, Legislative Affairs and Government Operations Committee. If not, do we have a motion? Motion by Commissioner Joliet, support by Commissioner Loops. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes passed. Next up, we'll move on to the approval of the agenda. Are there any changes or corrections to the agenda? If not, do we have a motion? Motion by Commissioner Loops, support by Commissioner Joliet. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up, we'll move on to public comment. Is there anyone from the public who would like to address the Legislative Affairs and Government Operations Committee meeting this morning? Okay. Seeing none, I will close public comment. Next up, we'll move on to communications. We've got two items under communication. Um, item A is the Human Resources Memorandums to the Board of Commissioners, and essentially this is the memo HR sent to the Board of Commissioners on March 30th, 2021. It's almost a little housekeeping to receive and file. And the second item B is Parks and Recreation Commission Natural Resources Management Update, June 2021. And this essentially is an overview of the OCPR Natural Resources and the importance of resource management. Um, do we have a motion to receive and file both of these items? Uh, motion by Commissioner Loops, support by Commissioner Jackson. Um, I'm sorry? Voice vote is fine. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up, we'll move on to item number one of our regular agenda. Introduction, we have Brittany Anthony from the Director of Human Resources, Informational Resources. So good morning, Brittany, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, pleasure being here. How's everyone? Okay. We're doing great, yeah. thank you. <laughs> so I just, I know with COVID, uh, it seems like it's past overdue, uh, definitely for this introduction. So I want to take the time just to share with you all a little bit about, uh -oh. Minute, okay. Share with you all a little bit about my background. So prior to coming uh, to Oakland County, I was working for a nonprofit uh, that was located nationwide um, called Bethany Christian Services. And so they focused on foster care services, um, conjugal care, and other resources for you know adoption and refugee and immigrant um, housing. So I was there for three years before I came to Oakland County. And prior to that, I was in the Washington DC metropolitan area and worked for Arlington County in human resources and had a focus on a lot of organizational development items, um, looking at the new introduction of our early career workers. So the new generation coming into the workplace and worked with Arlington on creating succession planning and career pathing to change that catapult of a lot of our high high season workers were set for retirement and how we were gonna offset that to make sure that we were rendering the appropriate services to our community. Um, also before that, I also worked for the city of Ann Arbor. So worked at the local government level um, in human resources with a heavy focus on benefits. I just recently, I'll say in the last five years, got my master's degree from George Washington University uh, focused on HR and organizational development as well. Excellent. Thank 
Commissioner Gershenson. Thanks, Brittany, <coughs> for coming. It's so nice to meet you, even if it's virtually. Um, so uh, this nonprofit that you worked for, was that based out of Michigan? Yes, their headquarters was located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Okay, so you've been in Michigan for at least five years, did you say? Or? Yeah, I came back from D.C. It would have been 2015. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so you were in Grand Rapids and then you came to this position? So, yes, correct. Very good, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Do any other commissioners have any questions um, for Brittany? Um, Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Chair. Um, hello, Brittany. Um, nice to meet you today. And um, just a quick question um, in con uh, concerning Bethany Christian Services. What was your role with that uh, nonprofit organization? I was the human resources director, so I had a focus on the legal compliance side and just making sure that all the applicable labor laws were rendered um, within the HR unit and then overseeing all the divisions within that department. I see. Um, if I'm not mistaken, wasn't Bethany really involved with uh, um, uh, placing um, some of the immigrant children that were um, displaced um, into foster care? Um, throughout the country, because you said they were a national nonprofit. Because that's not yes, what correct. I'm ringing a bell correct. with me with them. Okay. All right. Yes. Thank you. And they still are leading that charge of making sure that they're going down to the border um, and ensuring that um, the children, unaccompanied minors, have somewhere to reside outside of those concentration camps. Okay. Thank you. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Welcome, County. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other commissioners? Um, Commissioner Gershenson. Okay, I, I just have to question that term concentration camps. Yes. <laughs> what exactly do you mean by that? So so essentially the the different administrations, so under the Trump administration, um, they created some facilities that weren't up to par, I'd say for safety purposes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, are you saying the terminology of it or? I'm saying the terminology of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I know it's it's called a lot of different terms, but I know in the news and the media, they also have the control facilities at the border. Um, and then they also, historically, a concentration camp was tied to um, other historical contexts. So probably the wrong term to use for that. I'd appreciate that. Not Thank using you. That term. Um, also, uh, so have you d overseen employees directly? Yes. Yep. I have had um, direct reports. So, under when I was at Bethany, I oversaw the benefits division. So, that included a benefits manager. Um, I also oversaw a director of talent, and I also oversaw the training manager. So, our training unit. So have you overseen staffing, not, not just um, department heads, but have you overseen a group of staff? Yes, so pretty much the whole department. So our, our receptionist was under my peer review as far as a direct report. And so it was from our most entry level position to a management level. Got it, thank you. <clears throat> well. Brady, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It was nice to learn a little bit more about your background. And um, I think it goes without saying that we look forward to collaborating and working with you as we move towards the future. So thank you so much for joining us this morning. Sure, and I just wanted to share another tidbit with you all. Um, I will be going on maternity leave. So I know because you see me from the shoulder up, you can't tell, but I did wanna at least share that, um, you know, I will be expecting to have my baby next month. So I did want to let you all know that I'll still have a pulse, um, but probably not so much in an April will be serving as interim while I'm on leave. Excellent. Well, congratulations and thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. All righty, next up we'll move on to our second item on our regular agenda, which is the Parks and Recreation Commission 2020 Millage Funded Grant Program presentation. Do we have a motion? Motion by Commissioner Joliet, support by Commissioner Gershenson. Good morning, Melissa. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning.
Hi, thanks for having us. Um, Sue Wells is on the call as well. Um, I see Tara in the, in the back, so good morning. Um, could somebody make me presenter so I could run through this presentation real quick? Thank you. So this is the same presentation um, that is in your packets. There we go. Um, and again, it's just kind of a general update on, I'm gonna focus this brief presentation just on the two um, grant programs that we're developing. And I know later on in the agenda, Sue's gonna provide a couple additional updates as well regarding um, millage programs. Um, so just a real quick kind of update as to how we got to where we are today. I think everyone's aware, obviously, that we had a, um, a fairly significant increase in our millage uh, back in November from 0.2310 up to the 0.35, uh, which was our first ever increase, which passed at essentially the same rate that we passed at in 2010 when we just went for a renewal. So we are very, very proud of that. We thank all of our constituents for their support. Um, and just to show you, the minimum approval was 66% and the max was 87%. So again, we're just... We're very grateful for that. Um, we thank everyone for their support. So some of the new initiatives that we um, promoted and talked quite a bit about when we were um, doing our millage awareness campaign, we, with the passage of the millage, we are offering free annual vehicle passes to seniors, veterans, and active military and persons with permanent disabilities. And we're very proud that today, as of today, we've given away just about 6,700 uh, annual vehicle permits. So people are definitely taking advantage of that and getting out into our parks. Um, so we're really happy with how that's working out. And then the two programs that I'm gonna talk more about in a minute are the grant program for trails throughout the county and then a grant program for local park improvements. Um, but the other two initiatives were uh, some increased programmatic outreach for through our recreation programs and services department and then the dedicated funding for the of species management countywide, which is that SISMA conversation. So again, there are two grant programs that we're developing right now. They will be competitive grant programs. They'll be open to all the cities, villages, and townships within Oakland County. Um, for criteria, we are kind of modeling them off the DNR's grant program, which a lot of communities, um, Oakland County most definitely are very familiar with. Um, we're not maybe um, having quite as much quite as much uh, effort to apply as some of those DNR programs, but we are using similar criteria just so that we're kind of lining up our programs with other funding sources, um, which hopefully will lead to uh, our program being able to be used as match funding for some of these DNR programs. And our process right now, we're looking at a fall request for proposals with a, a winter due date, uh, either just before or just after the holiday, and then an early spring grant award. So the Trailways program for 2022, we have $750,000 budgeted for that program. Right now we're looking at um, breaking off about 30% of that for pre-development grant funding. So that's that um, you know public engagement, design, engineering, some of those kind of last pieces that need to come together before a trail can actually get constructed. We require a 20% match, 25% match for those. Um, and we would have a maximum of $25,000 for those types of grants. And then the other 70% of the, the funding for the trailways program would be for actual development, actual trail construction. Um, we'd be looking for a 50% match uh, and a max of $200,000 for those grants. Uh, the focus for the trail program is of course the beautiful trail network here in Oakland County, um, but also things like safety paths and connectors, sidewalks and bike lanes to help connect communities and get people from you know where they are to maybe different park resources or connect them to the larger trail network. So, we're looking not just at the, you know, the Oak Roots, the major trail system, but also all of those important connectors as well. Um, some of the considerations that are in the, um, the grant criteria will be, you know, financial need of the community, uh, public input, making sure the public is aware of the project, accessibility, and long-term maintenance plans. The Park Improvements Program, we have $450,000 budgeted for 22. Um, and these, the way we kind of, the reason we kind of structured it that way is that for the county, for the park system, the trails within the county tend to always be the highest ranking thing. And I think everybody, you know, kind of sees that in the surveys that we've done and in the public engagement that we've done. So we wanted to kind of weight the funding this year more heavily toward that trailways program. Um, but that's something that the Parks Commission can always adjust, you know, if we think that we need more for park improvements and maybe a little less for trails, you know, each year we can kind of look at that and readjust those numbers. 
So again, for the park improvements program, that 30% for pre-development and 70% for development. The focus really is essentially outdoor park facilities. So things like fishing facilities, beaches, boating access, picnic areas, playgrounds, ball fields, park trails. Those are kind of the, the ones we see most often, but um, you know, park improvements in general will qualify. Including support projects, you know, we need restrooms at our parks, um, nature interpretation, storage buildings, anything to help make that park function. And again, the same considerations as for the trailways program. Melissa, what are some examples of the nature interpretations? Um, like nature interpretation signage, um, you know, as you're walking through the parks and you see those beautiful signs that tell you, you know, what it is that you're looking at. Um, some of the history sometimes and the natural resource features of a park. Uh, those things, you know, they, they tend to cost more money than folks think. Um, just gathering all the information, the design, and the instruction, or the um, construction and installation. So that's kind of what we're thinking about there. Thank you. So just some general kind of overview program information. Projects obviously have to be located within Oakland County. We will be encouraging communities to work together where, you know, maybe different trail projects or even you know, if impact or benefit more than one community, we'd love to see that um, collaboration. We wanna see that projects are included in some sort of planning document. Um, it can be either a master plan or a uh, capital improvement plan or a city, you know, city plan or park plan. Essentially, we just wanna make sure that it's a, it's a project that's been thought out, not necessarily a, a knee-jerk reaction to the funding being available. Um, we're not gonna be funding long-term operations and maintenance. Um, most of the grant programs do not fund that. It's not really a sustainable thing for us to fund. Uh, for the development funds, we want to see a project remain open for a minimum of 15 years. And then uh, cities, villages, and townships will be able to receive funding every three years is what we're saying right now. Again, that could change depending on, you know, what we see coming in in terms of applications. But with 62 cities, villages, and townships, we really want to make sure that everyone has a bite of the apple and that, you know, a few communities aren't um, getting the grants every year. So that's kind of the reason behind that. Um, and then just again with those free development grants, we were getting some questions on what that entails. Things like that, engineering, design, public engagement, the construction drawings, all that kind of, everything that leads up to the actual project itself. And that is that. Right now we're looking at um, a request for proposals. Um, we're working right now on getting the online application process going and laser fish with IT. Take some of that marketing and collateral uh, information pulled together so by the end of the summer, we can start broadcasting that into the communities uh, and to the commission as well so that you can share it with your constituents. Um, Commissioner Loops, when will the application process be open? I know you're working on it, but do you have an estimate of when the cities will receive the information? We're shooting for October 15th for the RFP to be open. We're hoping to have some, at least some basic information in the community's hands before that sometime in September. Um, but that RFP should open sometime in mid-October. And then, you know, we'll give them at least two to three months to, you know, gather all the information and apply. Thank you. Commissioner Gershenson. Hi, Melissa. I've got a couple questions. Um, when you said we're going to be giving free passes to the disability population, how are you, what outreach are you doing to that group? Um, I know we have reached out, um, we've been promoting it wherever and whenever we can. Um, it's on our website, it's been promoted on our social media. Um, adaptive uh, recreation person, Sandy Dory, she's been communicating it with um, like assisted living centers and group homes that were actually been able to provide some of those um, groups kind of some bulk passes to even use for, you know, their company vehicles that are transporting people to and from the parks that have disabilities. Um, so we're trying to spread it out there as widely as we can. We've got some nice posters that were done up that are at all of our park facilities. Um, so if um, we're more than happy to share that with folks if you'd like to. I, I think it would be smart to send it to the commissioners as well. I think that's great. Um, so you, Penny asked my question about when CVTs. What's it, what is our relationship with SISMA? So our relationship with SISMA right right now is that we are a member of the SISMA. Oakland County is a member of the SISMA. Um, what we're planning to do going forward is essentially to absorb the SISMA into Oakland County Parks and Recreation mm -hmm. into our natural management unit. So that essentially the goal was 
that there'll be some long-term stable funding from CISMA. Rather than relying on grant funding every year, the county will be able to provide a little bit more stability um, and a little bit more integration with what's going on countywide. So we kind of pushed off the official integration of the CISMA into later this year, this fall, um, for a couple of reasons. One, because we're looking at the NR unit as a whole and figuring out the best way to integrate these new positions into what we're already doing. And also because the CISMA currently has some active grants through the DNR that are being managed by Six Rivers, who's their current fiduciary. Um, and in talking with Six Rivers and the DNR, it made more sense to kind of let them wrap up those specific grants with Six Rivers and then start fresh with the county in the fall. So we would be the fiduciary or, or they would be a part of our Parks and Rec program? It's both. Both. <laughs> mm -hmm. Both, yeah. They will, become, they will be... They will be Open County Parks and Recreation staff um, who will have some focus on CISMA related activities, which is that kind of countywide um, education and treatment and collaboration. And just one more uh, what was the total amount of the grants available to CVTs? So for 2022, it's 1.2 million. It's oh. 700 wow. for trail and 450 for the park improvements. Great. Thank you. Um, Melissa, I just have one quick question. How much of the Parks and Rec Rec's budget will go towards um, supporting CISMA? Oh, that's a good question. Sue, I don't know if you want to take that one. I know we're, um, it's an interesting question because we're, we are looking kind of at the NR unit as a whole and figuring out the best way to integrate staff so that it's not just, you know, here's CISMA staff and then here's the natural resources staff. We want them to to be more of a team effort and be more collaborative. Um, I think that the specific budget for 22, kind of the millage money that was allocated to CISMA was about $270,000. Um, I want. I think that's for, for 2022. It's like between 260 and 280, I think. And is that a year moving forward? Yes, yep. And how many positions um, does that fund out of the 270,000? Um, I don't have a good answer for you on that because they're still working on that in our unit review because it'll it'll likely fund portions of different positions so that we've got you know folks that are looking at the educational and the outreach components and also the on the ground treatment components and so it's it's not necessarily funding like three positions per se but parts of different positions that will all kind of work together to do those system activities. Sure. And as we do move into the future, will we have more details on the specifics? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Of course, some of the kinks as we kind of do this transfer um, with Six Rivers. But yes, we can definitely come back with a, a more concrete update maybe later this fall. Excellent. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Joliet. Thank you. A uh, quick note of comment. I was glad to see that you're taking into consideration long term maintenance plan for these grants. So many older communities had parks and trails that they're just not able to maintain anymore. So great ideas, but important for maintenance long-term. We agree. Thank you. Is there any other questions, comments uh, for Melissa? All right, see you then. Melissa, thank you so much for joining us this morning and giving us an overview. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. Do we have a motion to um, receive and file? You you did get one earlier in the beginning. Did oh, I sure did. Just need a voice. I sure did. All righty. All those in favor to receive and file the Parks and Recreation Commission 2020 Millage Funded Grant Program presentation, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Pam. Next up, um, item number three, we've got the Parks and Recreation Commission Parks Millage Informational Update. And with us this morning, I believe we've got Sue with us. Mm. I know we were having some audio video um, difficulties on the other end. Oh. Oh, there she is. Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning, commissioners. Uh, as Melissa did speak about the the millage, um, pretty much, but just to give you an update, uh, I think with our millage passage, our number one priority is to continue to maintain our parks at the high standard that we we operate them. 
uh, we have since COVID never seen our day use parks so busy. And I think that's important that we continue to operate them with the funding uh, that we received. Uh, one thing that we do have as part of the millage initiative was our deferred maintenance uh, that was uh, has been put off and we have budgeted uh, $4 million for roads, for parking lots, for the things that people don't, that they take for granted. And each year we'll evaluate that. We do have a plan on deferred maintenance for our 15 parks, uh, but uh, we, we hope to get, uh, I know staff has started now identifying those and uh, getting those ready to go out to bid. Uh, we did, uh, Melissa did talk briefly about CISMA. Our big concern with con CISMA and natural resources is we didn't want to create two different silos and we wanted to make certain that CISMA and natural resources worked hand in hand and we could share the knowledge base of the staff uh, moving forward, not only for our park system, but for the 62 CBTs. Um, that's about all, you know, in regards to what Melissa indicated, the update I have. My question was when I originally got um, the agenda, we wanted to talk about Waterford. I don't know if you want to continue that conversation today sure i guess so is there any updates i know that um here just a couple weeks ago uh some commissioners met with uh parks and rec in regards to the state of the waterford um wave pool park and i know that we learned um, that it's pretty outdated and there's a lot of repairs that need to take place and unfortunately i know it just came out here just but about two weeks ago that unfortunately we had to uh, close the wave pool just due to staffing, um, inadequate staffing. So I guess, Sue, is there any new additional information from when we met uh, previously in regards to the, the future of Waterford um, wave pool? Uh, well, short, short term, uh, no, there are there is nothing new. You did indicate that, uh, as most people know, that we did have to close Waterford for this season. I just want to caveat that uh, here in Clinton uh, did not open one, one water park. Wayne County did not open their water park. And Washtenaw County just opened their water park the 1st of July. Uh, so it is not a Oakland, it becomes an Oakland County problem, but it's a problem in Southeastern Michigan, if not the country. Uh, in what Commissioner Nelson was indicating uh, for those people who were not in attendance, Waterford Oaks, it was the second wave pool built in the United States. Uh, it has uh, survived the, the winters and it, it's, it's getting tired. We've put We've maintained it, we've added new features, we've had to take down new features because of the structural integrity. Uh, so right now we currently have a children's play feature and wave pool. And so we are evaluating the long-term usage of Waterford. Our intent was to do reach out to the community and do a survey, not only of Waterford Oaks Water Park, but also Waterford uh, Park. Um, and we were gonna do it at the water park, but with it not opening, uh, we, and with us getting a new director on staff, uh, the thought is we would do it in the fall, if not the first part of the year. So that's about where we're at with that one. Excellent. Thank you, Sue. Um, Commissioner Gershenson. Thanks, Sue. Uh, I have been confused in some of the um, some of the news releases, press releases. Are we closing the water park, or are we closing the whole park? It 
Well, the water park for this season is closed. The day use park is open. Okay. So I just wanted to give you that feedback that some of the press that's gone out, I haven't been, I, I, I was a little confused. Well, are you talking about the whole park? Because it's such a gorgeous park. There's so many incredible trails and so many wonderful things to do. Or are you specifically just talking about the water park? So it was just a little confusing to me. Just passing that I can out. reach out. I can reach out to our communications staff uh, and just uh, spread spread that information to them, and we potentially could put something on Facebook. Yeah, but just to highlight all the great things there still are to do in that park. I, I appreciate that feedback. Yeah, that was great. Do Thank you. To any other commissioners, um, Commissioner Jackson. Thank you. Um, hey, Sue, I just wanted to ask you because you mentioned that there was uh, increased attendance and interest um, in our parks. How do we gauge that? Um, uh, and have people been inquiring about the swimming pool more than in past years? Is the impact of it being closed being felt at a greater degree? Well, your first question, how do we gauge uh, our park system uh, attendance? At our day use parks, we have car counters, mm. uh, but also just from feedback, and this is very subjective of our users and our staff is, you know, I've never seen it so busy. When we've been out, when I've been out there, the parking lots have been filled. Uh, we're seeing more issues with different user groups, have it be bicycles, hikers, uh, runners. So we're getting several different user groups out there. It, and it's a good problem to have. I mean, that's why we have our wonderful park system, but uh, we've had to close the parking lot because we've been full. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, you know, it's, it's, like I said, a good problem to have, but they are, Independence and Orion seem to be the busier parks. However, uh, Red Oaks, uh, where the Nature Center is, and Commissioner McGilvery may echo the concerns, is their parking lot is always full. So the second part uh, of the question concerning the pool impact, um, is it being felt by the community? Is community expressing uh, displeasure? Um, how are we looking as far as it goes? Well, I think the community uh, is twofold. Uh, number one, that they're uh, this, they aren't pleased that it's open. Uh, they they understand the staffing situation, uh, and then they understand safety. So we've gotten several posts on Facebook. Um, I, I think when I've talked to the news media, uh, they've been very supportive. And I think if you watch the news every day, there's somebody looking for help. But the community, I'd like to say understands it, but with Waterford, it's very much a memory-based water park because you talk to people and they say, I remember going there as a kid. So, you know, there's a lot of memories attached to that. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with it. Um, one thing I want to note that next week we do have a meeting scheduled with uh, Brittany Anthony, our staff, to go over next year's initiatives for hiring, have it be pay incentives, um, bonuses, and onboarding just to streamline things for part-time staff. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Uh -huh. Is there any other questions? that commissioners have for Sue. Alrighty, seeing none. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Sue, and giving us an update. We appreciate it. Thank you. And thanks, Sue, for all you're doing, stepping into that interim position. You've been amazing. My pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, seeing that there's um, no more discussion on item number three, we'll move on to item number four, which is the Parks and Recreation Commission status of parks director search. And I believe, again, we've got uh, Sue and uh, Chairman of the Parks and Rec Commission, Gary McGill, for joining us. So welcome, Gary. Thank you. Sue, you want to start? <laughs> uh, just real briefly, uh, we uh, are, the, the commission is in the process of um, interviewing. Uh, however, uh, the GovHR is the recruiting firm for this position. There were 82 applicants uh, for the position, and it was open for six weeks. Uh, GovHR narrowed that scope down, and then I will pass the torch to Commissioner McGilvery. Thank you, Sue. Um, we, uh, the, the GovHR, uh, James Vitrino is his name, he um, narrowed 82 appli total applicants that applied, uh, whittled that down to about the top eight, um, and then uh, we didn't interview all eight, he did, but we did not as a committee. Um, but uh, we got it down and we picked uh, the ones that he preferred, rated number one, he, he rated them. Uh, he had uh, six can five, five candidates, we added a sixth one. Um, of those six names, Four people came in for interviews just yesterday. We spent the entire day uh, interviewing those folks. Um, because of confidentiality, I can't reveal who those people are, obviously, uh, but they are two well-qualified candidates, uh, both live locally in this area. Um, uh, one is a Parks and Recreation Director for a large city in Illinois, even though he lives here. <laughs> which I find a little odd. Um, but uh, uh, the other is a local gentleman who's in charge of uh, parks and recreation here, right here in Oakland County. So um, so we're, we're gonna narrow it down to the top two, which we did yesterday after we met with all of them. Uh, those are the top two that I just mentioned. Um, so, that's kind of where we're at. Um, it now we'll go August 2nd, we were gonna have a special parks board meeting uh, where everybody will get an opportunity to meet those two folks. And we will go from there and we meet also on the August 4th uh, and hopefully we'll be able to name uh, a person at that point, so. Excellent, wow, I appreciate that update, uh, sure. Gary and Sue. Uh, Commissioner Gershenson. Sounds like a great process, Gary. Um, that gentleman that did the narrowing, I don't recognize the agency he's with. Is that with us, Oakland County? or uh, He's, he's a, a, a contractor for Oakland County. He's done a lot of the executive positions. Uh, his name is James Petrino. He's a former city manager for Rochester uh, years back, and uh, uh, GovHR is a... Uh, organization that's uh, national uh, okay. and he kind of runs the operations here in the Michigan area um, mostly for all government jobs uh, top level government jobs so so we contract with him yes and you were satisfied he does he have a particular interest or experience with um, parks uh, well just in his in his professional business he does for all communities, all townships, uh, counties around Michigan, and I'm sure that there's been a few Parks and Rec people. And when you say everybody can meet the candidates on August 2nd, do you mean st park staff? The, the, the Parks Commission and Park staff. That That's the plan, so that we can make sure that everybody has an opportunity to staff, because it, it's so very important that whoever we select is able to work with those folks. So uh, I think it's a great idea. Uh, so we're, that's the way we decided to do it. And that was James' recommendation. So that's what we're doing. Sounds good. Sounds like you've managed it really well. Yeah. Absolutely. 
I'm pleased to hear that there was a total of 82 applicants. That's that's amazing, and the fact that it got narrowed down to a top eight, and then got narrowed down to a top six, and now we're at a top two. So it's been a long process, but we're we're getting there. It sure has, but it's also an, an important position here in Oakland County, and um, we appreciate the update on the process. So thank you, Sue and Gary. And and I also at this point want to thank Sue Wells for sticking around because she's leaving as well. But uh, we've kind of talked her into sticking around until we can get a new, new director in place. So um, I, I thank her for that. Well, thank you, thank you, Sue, for your leadership and assistance with this as well. So if there's no further questions, uh, thank you so much for joining us and updating us. Alrighty. Next up on our agenda, item number five, is the building authority appointment. Um, do we have a motion? Do I do a motion, Pam, on this one? You can have discussion and then a motion. Okay, whatever, perfect. However you like. um, so the building authority appointment, in previous uh, LAGO's, LAGO meetings leading up to today, we have had some discussions that this um, appointment was coming through us. Um, and just to kind of give all commissioners are aware, everyone did receive um, resumes and information. I know we've sent it out a couple times um, over the past month and a half, but essentially in January of 2020, uh, Mr. Jackson was appointed to a seat vacated by Donald Snyder on the building authority with a term expiring of December 31st, 2020. And Mr. Jackson continues to serve until this vacancy is officially filled. Um, we did have a delay in this reappointment. We should have been um, having this before us at the onset of 2021. However, there were some delays within this, so I'm happy to say that as of today, hopefully we can have some discussions and um, get this appointment filled. I do know that uh, Mr. Jackson has come recommended for a reappointment. I will say that given uh, the pandemic, there has been limited opportunities for in-person um, meetings. However, with that being said, uh, there has been recommendations um, and no objections to reappointing him. So I wanna open this up for further discussion with the committee. Commissioner Gershenson. Well, it's my understanding that um, this gentleman stepped in it, uh, when we needed someone, there was a, a vacancy and he, because of COVID, they haven't really met at all. They have met, it just, uh, he, I think we all know there's a difference of experiences meeting in person and getting to know people um, versus meeting and getting to know people through a, a virtual screen. So with that being said, I do believe that they have met. It has been virtually and it's been limited. So based on that information, I would like to recommend that we waive the, um, the interview process um, because he, it doesn't seem like he's really had a chance to sure. fulfill that role. So I certainly would like to give him that opportunity. Okay, so Commissioner Gershenson makes a motion to waive the publication and interviewing requirements. And just as a little background, the Legislative Affairs and Government Operations Committee waives um, the publication and interviewing requirements for the appointments or reappointments. So essentially, Commissioner Gershenson is making a motion to um, waive going through the posting and interview process um, to reappoint Mr. Jackson. Do we have a second? Um, motion made by Gershenson, support by Commissioner Jackson. Um, Pam, should we do a roll call or voice vote? Uh, you can do a roll call. Okay, roll call please. Okay, um, on the waiver of the advertising, uh, Commissioner Gershenson? Yes. Jackson? Yes. Lubes? Yes. Julia? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Madam Chair, you have five yeas, zero nays. Excellent, motion passes, thank you. So let's get back to, um, is there any objection to reappoint Mr. Jackson for the building authority appointment? And just for some further additional information, this is a three-year term expiring on December 31st, 2023. Um, this position also includes a county allowance and mileage reimbursement and a $90 per diem. The building authority meets every second Wednesday of the month at 9 a.m. in the facilities conference room of the Public Works Building in Waterford Township. So do we have a motion to appoint Mr. Jackson to the building authority? Motion by Commissioner Lubes, support by Commissioner Jackson. Um, roll call, please. 
on the appointment of Mr. Jackson. Jackson? Jackson. Commissioner Jackson? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I thought it was, I just <laughs> was his name again. Yes. Lutz? Yes. Joliet? Yes. Gershenson? Yes. Nelson? Yes. Madam Chair, you have five yeas, zero nays. Excellent. Thank you. Can I just add one thing? I just wanted to compliment staff. I'm not sure exactly who provided all the information, but usually I have 10 questions and we got, it was, a, it was very um, helpful to get all that information up front, very easy to make this decision. So I just wanted to thank staff for that. Yes, thank you. Um, with that being our last item on the regular agenda, is there any other further business to come before the Legislative Affairs and Government Operations Committee this morning? Alrighty, without objection, oh. I had to, ooh, I Commissioner, have, no, it's David, <laughs> Commissioner um, Jackson. Um, thank you, and I really appreciate uh, Gary and Sue giving us that update on that, the search for the director. Um, question about our su sustainability officer yes. uh, position. Do you know if we could kind of have the same type of uh, uh, information given to us as far as that process right now? Absolutely. Know I know that the sustainability uh, task force, they did meet here, I want to say last week, and I know Commissioner Markham was the point person with that. So what I can do is I can definitely reach out to Commissioner Markham, get an update from her, um, just as an immediate relay of information, but I would also uh, like to reach out, we'll reach out to April um, Lynch and have her uh, come before us and provide the same little background process in regards to how we um, are going through that process. I think that's a great idea, Commissioner Jackson. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Commissioner Gershon. Well, I might as well add to that. I do want to personally thank Gary for coming out today and, and Sue and Melissa Prouse. You've really kept us up to date on everything that's been going on in parks, and I know it's been a ton of work, and we're, it's, it's so important to our community. I think COVID really um, pointed out how important our, our parks are to, met, to the health of our residents. So just wanted to say we are very appreciative for your work on that. Absolutely, thank you. Um, additionally, I guess before uh, we adjourn, um, if there are any updates that uh, committee members would like to see come before LAGO, don't hesitate to reach out to myself um, or staff. I know that that's one of the things I'm gonna be uh, planning with uh, our lovely analysts, Mike and Amy in regards to looking at um, getting some additional updates from other departments um, that we haven't had yet this year. So if there's anything specific that commissioners would like to see um, as an update or come before the LAGO committee, don't hesitate um, to reach out and we'll get that set up and on our agendas. So if there isn't any further business, uh, without objection, I declare the meeting adjourned at 1019. Thank you. <laughs>